Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, I know it's been three weeks since I put up a video, but there really hasn't been a lot to post. I've been trapped at home with the COVID lockdown just like you guys have. So the only updates really, uh, not a lot has changed. This tank has stayed pretty dang clear. Um, I did lose the yellow clown goby. Uh, one day, basically after the last video, the very next day, he didn't eat. And at the end of the night, I caught him, and he was halfway eaten by one of these, uh, one of these ball anemones. So, and I couldn't even get him to let go. So, um, I don't know. Maybe I need to get these ball anemones out of here. Maybe I need to use that uh, a past uh, Aptasia X for for these things, and maybe get rid of these things too, because I can't have them eating my fish. So. The 250, I finally got new fish, but you're not gonna see them just yet. Uh, I did find one more Aptasia in here and uh, swiftly killed it off and I haven't seen anything since. Uh, engineer gobies have been rearranging the tank a little bit. They built this little wall up here, digging that little tunnel there. And they also built that little mound there and this one here. But we got new fish, so what do we get? We got an Acellaris clownfish. This is a phantom clownfish. It's basically the same thing as a black ice. It's a Darwin and a snowflake, I think. And this is a Picasso. So we're going to acclimate them to the tank using these acclimate that I bought. Uh, I did buy a second one of these things so I could do these both at the same time. And yeah, so uh, step one with these acclimates is going to be getting this water level above here. And that's going to take a minute because i got to slowly add tank water to to make the top of this. So... Let me get some tank water in there and we'll catch it back up once we're full. All right, so I may have misspoke before. Uh, what is important is that the water level in the acclimation box is the same as the level in the tank, which we're pretty close to here, as you can see. Water level kind of matches, kind of matches. We'll go ahead and add just a little bit more just to Make it so it's not even close. So now we gotta turn these valves to open. This one here, this one here. And we gotta use the old fashioned suck on the end of the hose to start the siphon. siphon. Thanks, Mom. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and started the siphon. We're going to take our little stick here and shove it into the end of the hose the proper number of spaces to control the drip. All right, we have bought the standard size acclimate box. So since this is a hardy fish, uh, we're going to station 12. That means 12 of these little nubs is going in the hose. So these are what the sticks look like fully inserted as you can see only to the edge there so that hose is hooked to obviously back here you see and then that hose runs over here which is our siphon hose that runs to the tank So the question is, how am I not siphoning water from the tank straight into this bucket, not into here? All right, a quick read through of the instructions has informed me that once we get our siphon going, we pop this hose out of here 
and we're gonna move it over to here. This is the upper metering. And so the fresh water will come in there and the water going out will come from over there and that's how this works. So we do this one. that in. Now if I've done this right, once I open these valves, it'll start the slow hour-long acclimation. Of course now I'm leaking everywhere. Hold on. So this one's working. You can see about how much water's coming out of there. So it'll take about an hour or 50 minutes according to the chart in the instructions for the water in here to change. Let's go ahead and open this valve. You can see the water is going through. We'll just wait at this end for it to finish coming around. And the drip acclimation has started. So let's get a good look at these guys. This is the Phantom. And what I like about him is these you know, nice little bright spots on, you know, he's got the, the big patch of white there and then he's got brighter white patches in the white patch, which is what drew me to this specific fish. And really I was looking for something else to, to go with, to pair with that, but um, my options were limited. The other store kept jerking me around. I'll get a picture of some fish, for, to you in a couple of days and that's been going on for three weeks so finally i gave up on that uh this store they only had um basically him or an all-white version of him or one with the less interesting pattern so so i went ahead and went with this picasso here and he's actually kind of growing on me now that i've got him i kind of like him you know <clears throat> So we'll come back in about 50 minutes and we'll go ahead and release these guys into the tank. The acclimate boxes have been running for about an hour now. So these fish should be ready to go into the main display of the tank. Uh, I'm gonna start with the Picasso clown here. And um, before I move on, uh, you will notice that the level on the acclimate is now below the level on the display of the tank despite the fact that they started a little bit or at least close to the same level it's the same thing on this one so the flow isn't exactly what it should be but it seemed to have worked just fine so let's go ahead and shut this valve off and then we'll be needing little hose anymore nor will we need the big hose just drop my equipment everywhere so how am I gonna do this so I'll this thing is suction cup to the outside of the tank. This inner tank comes out, but there's only going to be water up to that first little hole there, which I think should be enough. So we'll let him swim out on his own. Assuming he decides he wants to. And there he goes. So we'll say I was worried uh, in using these acclimate boxes about these suction cups holding the weight of this water off the tank 
and was worried about these things were going to fall off, but they in fact did not fall off. So the suction cup held pretty well, and if you notice, there's a little flippy little tab there. Another one on the bottom of this one here in the middle, and one on the side of this one here, so that no matter where you are, you can access that little flap from the outside, and that's how you take the <clears throat> And so you break the suction on the suction cup to then remove your acclimate from the tank. So let's go ahead and shut this valve off. And we'll go ahead and pop the hose off since we don't need that anymore. As soon as we're confident that it's not going to leak water all over the carpet. Same thing with the inner hose. And although it didn't work as well as I hoped it would, we're gonna do the same thing again. We use the box itself to put the fish in. Um, apparently there are holes in the bottom, which is why all the water drained out, despite the fact that I was gonna try and leave some in there, but never, it has happened. So now we'll let the phantom clown out. And he is out and into the tank. And these two clowns, which have never met before outside of those looking at each other from the boxes, are swimming together and apparently getting along fine. Um, one of the things about clownfish are that, you know, I'm sure you know this, but they will change sex based on whichever one of the two of them is larger. But they will also decide that if you put them in when they are the same size. They will work out between the two of them which one is the stronger one. And that one will become the female. But I'm sure they come with the sex when they're born. And if that works out, then maybe that's why they're already so um, so tame with each other, um, despite the fact that they just met. Uh, there's not really any chasing each other. They're just hanging out together. So that's going good. So let me go ahead and get this cleaned off, and <clears throat> and then... We'll check in on these guys, see how they're doing. So like I said, the final removal of this acclimate box from the outside of the tank, all you really gotta do is you get your finger under that little flippy tab on the suction cup, and you break the suction. Do that to all three. One more over here. And now the middle one's holding again. And there we go. It pops right off the glass. And we can dump this into our wastewater. And then we'll pack all this stuff away, clean off the tank, and we'll get a look at our fish, maybe give them some food. So for their first day in this tank, I'm going to go ahead and give them the Reef Nutrition Real Oceanic Eggs, since I'm pretty sure this is what they were fed at the tank that I got these from, or at the store that I got these from clownfish from so we'll just give them a little taste of that and basically start the process of training some new fish you know trying to get these guys to know that I am not a threat that I am the bringer of food so let's see how they react once they know the food's in there So far, they are not actively seeking out the food. The engineer gobies, however, they know it's up. So normally I wouldn't do this, but let's go ahead and make them. Oh, wow. Well. 
So they're hanging out here with the engineer goby. They are having trouble with the current and I think maybe I'm going to need to turn these wave pumps down even further. Let me know what you think if this is just too much current for this guy or if I'm just overreacting. I'm pretty pleased with how this went. I mean I was fully prepared for at least a week of these two chasing each other around as they tried to figure out their pecking order, but they're just buddies right from the get-go here, so thank goodness for that. So hopefully we can get this tank really going here and get some anemones or something and these guys hosting on stuff because that's really all I'm looking for out of a tank. Over the last couple of days, I have noticed that um, I have pods again. So I'm able to see pods in here again, uh, despite the fact that I thought they were all dead. So I'm going to start feeding them the phytoplankton again. Uh, I was feeding the phytoplankton, but um, I did slow down there for a bit. But I'm going to start bumping it up now that the algae is pretty much, I mean, almost entirely gone. I mean... Just look at this tank. This is unreal how clean it became. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've already turned the lights back up again. So now the lights are running at, uh, I think, 20%. And the refugium light is now running every night again, but it's only running for like two hours a night. So I may adjust that some. Start turning it back up more again now that it's now that the tank is fully cycled and we can really start running with it. So that's all I've got for today. Uh, I've checked in on the fish a couple of times. They're doing great. Uh, lights on the tank are going down. Uh, I'm definitely going to try and get back to, to making videos more often again. Um, it's just, you know, I mean, you're stuck in the house with me is not a good combination. I get stuck in a video game and... Uh, a couple of weeks melt away before I realize what's happened. So, <laughs> um, beyond that, um, I did notice editing this video and some in the past that uh, that I'm getting a pretty pretty nasty glare uh, from the afternoon sunlight coming through the door window. So, uh, I'm going to try and do something about that in future videos. Uh, maybe cover up the window or something. Uh, just so you know it doesn't glare off the tank so much um it's getting harder to, to film of course because you know like you've seen uh i got people living with me again so um you know you can't just say hey you know turn off the tv i need to film and you know i also can't do what i was doing which was you know at two o'clock in the morning i just get up and film some stuff because i live by myself but now i don't live by myself so uh, i can't do that anymore so um, here's some pictures of the fish and, uh, I hope to see you back next time. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you next time.